there are many challenges in the management of ovarian cancer. The first is that we don't have good screening tools for ovarian cancer. So many patients with advanced, have advanced ovarian cancer when they first present to the physician. The second challenge, especially in my setup, in my country, is a considerable number of patients with ovarian cancer are not operated on by trained gynecological cancer surgeons. We know that obtaining optimal debulking with no residual or minimal residual disease is very important in determining the long-term follow-up and survival of these patients. And because some of these patients don't get adequate surgical treatment at the first presentation, that sometimes results in a suboptimal outcome. The, the next issue that is uh, an important issue is that un unlike other t in other tumor types, uh, we have been a little bit behind as far as understanding molecular pathogenesis and immunology in ovarian cancer. So the majority of patients with ovarian cancer tend to get the same kind of treatment. They get surgery, they get chemotherapy, and then when they recur, they get more chemotherapy. Uh, and that is uh, uh, going to change soon because uh, for the first time, we now have some evidence that uh, a personalized approach to managing ovarian cancer is very important in achieving better results. We know patients who have the BRCA mutation uh, have certain advantages when it comes to ovarian cancer. Firstly, they respond better to platinum-based chemotherapy. And secondly, there is data from a study called Study 19, which shows that BRCA mutation carriers uh, who relapse and are platinum sensitive seem to do much better when they get maintenance treatment with a PARP inhibitor called Olaparib. Olaparib is the first targeted treatment for ovarian cancer. It is an oral compound uh, which has been uh, studied in a number of trials. There are two big published trials. One is a trial called Study 19 and another uh, trial called Study 41. And in Study 19, uh, patients who had platinum sensitive uh, ovarian cancer, who had relapsed, uh, who had been on previous platinum based chemotherapy, uh, were treated with uh, uh, the treatment arm involved giving them Olaparib tablets at 400 milligrams twice a day uh, compared to the control arm where no medication was given after the primary after the chemotherapy and the survival of patients who were BRCA mutation positive both germline and somatic was far superior compared to patients who are not on the drug so that is the first indication that Olaparib uh, is an active drug and very important for a certain subgroup of patients. We also have a number of other trials going on now. There are a number of trials, they are called SOLO1, SOLO2 and SOLO3. And SOLO1 is looking at Olaparib in patients uh, being used as first-line maintenance treatment. Obviously the results are, are not available yet, but if the results are positive, then it may change the way we treat ovarian cancer even at first presentation. We know that BRCA mutation carriers are quite common uh, in, in um, uh, many populations. In the Malaysian population, we have data recently published that shows about 12% of patients are BRCA mutation carriers. And in Malaysia, very interestingly, the Indian population in Malaysia have a 28% uh, in incidence of being BRCA mutation carriers compared to 7% in the Chinese population. Chemotherapy has been used for a long time in, in um, uh, ovarian cancer. However, unfortunately for the past 15 years, there's not been a major advance in chemotherapy uh, for treatment of ovarian cancer other than intraperitoneal chemotherapy, uh, which was, um, you know, there were some studies showing advantage. But the problem with intraperitoneal chemotherapy, the side effects with regard to the ports is quite high and uh, many patients do not are unable to complete the chemotherapy. The other big advantage is the introduction of a drug called bevacizumab. It's in a group of uh, compounds called anti-angiogenesis drugs. Uh, bevacizumab is active in uh, first-line treatment of ovarian cancer as well as in recurrent ovarian cancer, both platinum-sensitive and platinum-resistant. And 
Uh, unfortunately, most of the trials have shown an improvement of progestion-free progestion survival, which is modest, just about three to four months, but they have not shown an improvement in overall survival. Part of the reason why there's been no improvement in overall survival could be because a high proportion of the patients in the trials have crossover, so you may not be able to see this, this uh, survival advantage. The problem with bevacizumab is we had, unlike in PARP inhibitors, we do not have a good marker to predict which patients will respond. We know that certain subgroups of patients, for example, those who have bulky residual disease, do better when they are treated with bevacizumab. And there's some recent research that shows that certain immune markers um, seem to predict a better response, but it's really very preliminary work which needs to be reproduced.